Hello, my name is Roland Meinl from Aqua Enviro, and I'm here to talk to you about the microscopic analysis of activated sludge. Looking down the microscope is important, especially in identifying different indicator organisms which tell us how a plant is feeling and what actions we could take to improve its performance. Over the past 20 years, Aqua Enviro have viewed and recorded observations from over 10,000 sites, 10,000 samples, uh, mixed liquors, even trickling filter samples. And I'm going to talk to you about an example Aqua have worked upon recently whilst troubleshooting a variant of the activated sludge process uh, known as a membrane bioreactor. Now, broadly, what you see down the lens of the microscope can be split into four parts. Flox, protozoa, metazoa and filaments. Flox can be rounded, open, compact, weak or strong. And it's within these flox that the majority of treatment occurs, around 95% of biological treatment, in fact. Grazing those flocks are protozoa and metazoa, and what these do is they keep them in a nice shape. Essentially, they're our gardeners, and they keep the flocks all neat and tidy. They also give us information about the sludge age and the stability of the plant. Clarity of bulk liquid, after you've settled it, provides a clue to the effluent quality, but really it's the filament type and numbers that draws the most attention. Now, filaments are like strings. They bridge together between flocks and disrupt them. They prevent settlement, they reduce settlement, and they reduce the filtration of mixed liquor, which can cause solids loss from settlement tanks. Filaments can also cause an unsightly, an unsightly odorous foam and can grow on surfaces in almost pure cultures. Now, there are several types of genus and species of filaments, and identifying them does give us evidence as to the cause and underlying plant problem. However, really, it's always preferable and more cost-effective to treat the cause and not the symptom of filamentous bulking or foaming. Now, in domestic wastewater treatment plants, the most common and challenging filaments uh, we've, we encounter are Microthrix parvicella, uh, which resembles spaghetti, and Nocardia forms, which are the only true branched filament. In industrial wastewaters, it's more likely to be Thiothrix or type O21N, both of which love completely mixed conditions, warm temperatures, septicity, low dissolved oxygen and nutrient deficient conditions. Now, the application of microbiology in a troubleshooting situation goes beyond identifying what's there. Microbial makeup actually helps us optimise plant operation and prevent issues before they occur. So, we were recently called to an industrial plant which has a, a membrane bioreactor. Now, a membrane bioreactor uses a physical barrier in the form of a semi-permeable membrane in the place of a settlement tank to separate the activated sludge from the permeate. The permeate is the treated water. Now, doing that guarantees that you're going to have an effluent that's low in suspended solids. Now, you can imagine, over some time, the solids are going to build up on the surface of the membrane, increasing the pressure which it's got to operate, and you can handle that and manage it by back flushing and occasional chemical cleaning. Now on this site, the client was concerned about the frequency of membrane cleans, which was about five, four or five times higher than anticipated on a new system. Now microbiology was key to trying to develop a solution and a root cause analysis. We got the client to send two samples, once in advance of the site visit, uh, both at locations on the process before and after the membrane. And these showed us two completely different biomass cultures. While there should have been nothing on the backside, the permeate side of the membrane, we found a thick agglomeration of filaments and zuglia, which are signs of stressed plant conditions. Within the bioreactor, however, the conditions were nearly perfect. Uh, with a balanced population of microorganisms and a rapidly settling activated sludge comprised of compact, strong flocks. Now the difference in the samples, it was, it was astounding, and it showed us two completely unique cultures. And from this, we were able to conclude that the issue that was, being, that was occurring on the client's site was we were getting biological growth on the inside of the membrane, what should have been the clean side which isn't actually touched by backwashing or chemical cleaning. We're currently working with the client to develop strategies to clean that side of the membrane. However, to find out what happened, we undertook an operational walkover, which identified that during commissioning, mixed liquor from the activated sludge plant had been fed, through the, fed into the plant through the permeate pipework, which had subsequently colonized, colonized and adapted to grow on that inner clean surface of the membrane, as opposed to being within suspension in the aeration tank. Now in summary, microscopic analysis is a key weapon in the armory of an operator. Changes in the microbiology occur before a plant experiences operational issues. Therefore, it can be seen as an early warning indicator of any problems to come. Keep an eye on that, you can avoid those problems. 
The frequency of micro microscopic analysis required depends upon the plant and the feedstock, but really every site should understand its population of bugs, especially with the advent of updated industry-specific breath legislation, routine microscopic analysis is going to become strongly advised and possibly even enforced on many sites. If you'd like to learn more about our microscopy and troubleshooting services, please contact us at enquiries at aquarienviro.co.uk. Thank you very much.